Hey there. Today on the podcast, we're going to talk about cookbooks and family recipes. Stay with us. Hi, welcome to the Hungarian Living Podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Sebo Voss. Our goal is to discover, celebrate, and share Hungarian heritage and encourage you to do it too. We'll touch on food, travel, history, music, language, and share stories from our guests. We're glad you're here. This is a podcast where we'll explore Hungarian heritage in a variety of ways. We'll introduce you to some fun people and organizations who love their Hungarian heritage and share some great resources with you so you can get connected to your Hungarian heritage in a deeper way. So whether you know a little or a lot about being Hungarian, this is the place to be. I have had cookbooks and family recipes on the brain over the last several months as I have been going through cookbooks, digital files, and boxes and boxes of things from my mom's house. She died in 2008. Now it is 2022. I don't think anyone can accuse me of making rash decisions when it comes to going through my mom's paperwork. But to be fair, there are quite a few boxes, and we have had quite a few things going on since she passed away, so I'm finally getting around to sorting and deciding. I think it's a little more complicated because our business is inextricably intertwined with our Hungarian heritage. Combine that with my idea-generating personality, and it's a recipe for disaster. Or is it possibilities? There are so many possibilities. And considering there's a lack of details on some of my earlier ancestors, this stuff becomes even more important. But discerning what is and what is not important is a part of the challenge. These days, I might qualify as a Hungarian cookbook collector. Of course, I haven't collected to the same level as, like, Chef Louis Sapmati. If you were living in Chicago during the 1963-1989 time frame, you might have had the pleasure of eating at his restaurant, The Bakery. He collected around 45,000 books and culinary materials that has been divided and donated to various universities and institutions. There's the Sathmati Culinary Collection at the University of Iowa, the Sathmati Hungarica Collection at the University of Chicago, and a 400,000-item culinary arts collection that includes menus, which became the foundation for the Culinary Archives and Museum at Johnson & Wales University in Providence, Rhode Island. Okay, so just mentioning all of that makes me feel better. I don't have that much to go through. But I still have quite a few cookbooks. The question is, am I cooking with them? Do you have cookbooks? Are you collecting them? Or are you using them? I just haven't been cooking with all the resources I have on my shelf. And that is a shame. It seems like these recipes are waiting to come forth off the pages and be consumed and shared with the people I love. And then there are the family recipes. Those family favorites that have worked their way into the rotation. The quick and easy meals because I don't have the time or energy for slow food all the time. And then there are the heritage foods, the dishes that we have eaten somewhere along our travels that are connected to our heritage. And since we are a blended family, it means we are entertaining German and Dutch dishes along with the Hungarian ones. I also have a Filipino dish that I have to eat several times a year because I love it so much. Truth be told, I could eat it every week and I'm not even Filipino. There are truly so many recipes and so little time. And add to all of this that I really need to not be eating quite as much food as I have been eating anyway. I need to be experimenting with some lighter fare. What a dilemma. When I asked my younger brother if he had any handwritten recipes from my mom, he said his experience was more like show and tell. My mom would be in the kitchen cooking along with him, explaining what she was doing as she was doing it. Recipes were generally guidelines and not hard and fast. Some things were based on availability due to seasons or due to finances. Just because you were in the mood to eat something didn't mean you went out, bought all the ingredients, and made it like we do today. And by the same token, just because you were not in the mood for something didn't mean you didn't eat it. It was what was served, even if it was for days in a row. I recently saw a comment in a Facebook group where someone said they were sad because their mom made the best palacinta, which are Hungarian crepes, and they are sad because they will never eat it again because their mom passed away. I hope you aren't missing out on amazing food, resigned to not ever eating it again. Of course, if an amazing cook has passed on, it is true we can't eat their home-cooked food any longer. But we can set out to find a recipe that is similar and learn how to cook it for the next generation. You don't have to wait for a trip to Hungary or to a Hungarian restaurant, church, or club to eat good Hungarian food. In fact, 
If you are looking for the exact same taste from a restaurant, set your mind straight now. It is rare to find someone who makes things the exact same way as you recall. Let me encourage you to dig out a recipe and try several to find the one that comes closest if you don't have a family recipe. There are some lovely cookbooks out there as well as countless recipes on a variety of websites. But a family recipe is the best, and a handwritten family recipe is a special treasure. When someone requests a great recipe, they want something tried and true. If you have a recipe your friends and family love, please consider taking the time to share your recipe. A handwritten version is extra special. The other day, I came across a recipe written by one of my sister-in-laws for wedding soup. First of all, I love wedding soup. And second of all, Nancy is an amazing cook. But seeing her handwriting was a special treat during a busy day, and it brought up memories of fun family times. Do not dismiss the value of a handwritten family recipe. In fact, I don't know that there is a greater gift to receive. In the show notes, I will be sure to share a recipe that I found recently that my mom wrote down, and I'll share Nancy's wedding soup recipe too. I can't figure out if this recipe that my mom wrote down is one that she made, because I don't really remember tasting it. I don't even know that it's actually her recipe, but it is her handwriting. And it is an interesting coincidence that this recipe is for Saralmesh Lavalak, because that translates into love letters. And that is exactly what I think a handwritten recipe is. Some may say it is easier to type up a recipe and have it as a document to print or share. And I suppose that passing along the recipe is the main goal, no matter how it's done. But don't dismiss the value of something being handwritten. This, to me, is a love letter from my mom about something she was good at, creating Hungarian food. And it got me wondering, do my kids know my mom's handwriting? How will they know if they come across it? Does it matter in the long run? Maybe, maybe not. It's just something to think about, though. So if you have family recipes, find the best way to share them with extended family. You might decide to gather them all and print a family cookbook. You might just decide to scan handwritten recipes so everyone can see and become familiar with the handwriting of the elders of the family. Maybe it's time to reintroduce the art of Hungarian cooking food into your family line. We are also spread out these days that learning to cook a few Hungarian staples for ourselves is the way to ensure that we are getting a dose of heritage foods. If you love dabosh torta, why not learn how to make it? Do you have a friend or family member who will come over and experiment with you? I have done this with my kids, my cousins, and my friends through the years. For some reason, I feel much braver tackling something new when I have someone else with me. The bonus is we share the afternoon as well as some great food together. Making memories in the kitchen is a wonderful way to pass on Hungarian culture, family recipes, or create new traditions. What is that recipe that you are too chicken to try on your own? Who is an adventurous friend or relative? Invite them to join you in the kitchen and make it. And let me know what recipe you used and how it went. As always, thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast. Please share it with someone you know who loves their Hungarian heritage. We'll talk to you soon. Want to learn Hungarian or learn how to cook Hungarian food? We've got you covered. Check out all our class offerings as well as meaningful books and gifts at thehungarianstore.com. Special thanks to Stephen Chichek and the Animal Cannibals for the show music. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of the Hungarian Living Podcast, please share it with your favorite Hungarian. Check out our show notes for links to resources mentioned in this episode. If you have a question or comment, email us at podcast at hungarianliving.com. We'll catch you next time.